Hi everyone, welcome back to Online Darts. Here we are in the studio before play and we've grabbed him for a minute. We've got Macy Ace, Chris Mason. First of all, Mace, we'll come on to what we're going to talk about in a minute. But standard, <clears throat> unreal. Yeah, last night Kyle Wilkinson was outrageous. We've seen similar performances by Terry Jenkins. Great to see him back playing. and I mean, at times it's like he's never been away. Um, and the last time he did play was with me. We were off in, in Bahrain in the Middle East doing exhibitions with Paul Nicholson. And uh, I think his wife had to find him in the case. Whatever case he used to go away with, they were still in that. Um, yeah, in incredible to see. And um, yeah, it's, it's enjoyable commentating on him. Did he retire a little bit too early? <clears throat> yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, darts was always always played second fiddle, didn't it? Because he's obviously in the, the antiques business, as we know, and obviously property and, and everything else. So he, he always had outside interest. So it wasn't, it was never the be all and end all for him, but maybe on reflection because as sort of you know i sort of came out of the game the the big money started to started to come in and uh, now you're seeing players who were you know just sort of just inside the top 32 and in some fabulous money and, and it's great speaking of a return we can, <laughs> we can we can now say that you officially entered the world seniors qualifier yeah yeah i think i, I I find it hard to, to understand why anybody who wasn't involved in the sport wouldn't support it in some way. Um, you know, it's something I've been a cheerleader for, for for many years. I thought there was a place for it. I'd hoped the, the PDC maybe have done it at some point, but Barry was, was never interested. He was never really interested in the seniors tour and snooker. Uh, and obviously the, the the people behind the snooker, well, it's Jason Francis and, um, of course, the man behind Modus, Jason Tame, they've um, joined forces and yeah, listen, that the prize money's in place, we're in an iconic venue, the Circus Tavern, um, the, quali the qualifiers are at the Crucible, but not the one in Sheffield, yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> uh, in Reading, yeah, and I think, I, you know, it's limited to 128 players, I don't know who's entered yet, uh, mine's in, mine's done, and, and I, hope, I hope a lot of players support it, especially a lot of, lot of ex-players that, you know, didn't get the invite. I think it's important that we do support it to make sure it, it's something that continues. And of course, the plan is to have a tour after the World Championships, which is something that I don't have the time to be dedicated in any capacity of making any kind of comeback. I, I, I did my bit. I tried my best. I wasn't good enough. Um, but, um, you know, maybe at that level, uh, you know, I might have a, I'm going to have a bit of fun. That's that's the one thing. I'm, I'm going into it with my eyes wide open. Um no no expectations at all. I just want to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy seeing some of my old pals that you know I spent many years on tour with. Was it a difficult decision to pick them up again and play in a competitive environment? Because you walked away from the sport, world semi-finalist, um, multiple winner, but to come back and do it all over again, was that a tough decision? Yeah, because I don't think I can approach it half arsed. You know, I mean, if I'm going to do it, I've started practising already. Uh, that's been slow and, and quite difficult. Um, you know, I, I keep fit, but you use totally different muscles throwing the dart. I mean, they're only light, but um, yeah, my arms, my arms already a little sore. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fully committed to the qualifiers. Um, historically, I've always done okay in qualifiers, uh, going back many years. So yeah, I should be, I should be giving it everything. I'm not sort of, although I'm gonna make sure I enjoy, enjoy every part of it. Um, you know, I'm not going into it half cocked. I'm definitely going to give it absolutely everything, and I there'll be no stone unturned going into the the qualifiers. And of course, I mean, I'm a much better place physically and mentally than I ever was when I when I played professionally. And the sort of you know top sixteen player in the PDC, I was up to number three in the BDL, um, and with everything else that was going on around, as we've discussed many times, that's you know on reflection now where I where I'm in such a better place. I'm relishing the opportunity, and I've had, you know, you know, I've, I've had plenty of support, and a lot of, you know, a lot of people said, oh, "Go on, do it. Why not?" Um, and I thought, "Yep, yeah, let's have a go." Did the reaction the world team has got on social media help swing it as well? Because every time a post goes out from one of the legends or the main account, everyone is talking about, it and the buzz around this is, is unreal. Did that help sway it? Yeah, a little bit. It was something I was always going to support. Um, you know, I didn't, ex you know, I. I didn't expect to, to, to get an invite because there is still so many 
great players around who, who did way more than I did in the game that have still got something to offer. You know, it's a, you know, I mean, I say that about the standard, but we've seen what Phil's produced in, in, in recent months and years. And, you know, we've seen Richie Burnett. He won our, our Champions Week 1. Um, was it in 110 averages? We've seen it from Martin Adams. Of course, we've seen it from Terry Jenkins this week. Um, so it's still going to be bloody tough. You know, it's it's you know it's not like you're going to average seventy odd and, and make you know sort of progressing deep into the tournament. All the qualifiers, I mean, the qualifiers are going to be insanely tough. Um, as I said, there's still plenty of good players who are in their early fifties. This will give them a boost. You know, we're not. You know, probably maybe Phil's good enough that he could go back on tour maybe. But outside of that, that is some seriously tough environment now, and there's nothing else out there for us. Um, and the fact that that there is plans afoot to have a proper tour for for a year, maybe you know, maybe a tournament once a month. The majority of us would, would relish that opportunity. Listen, once you're a competitive person and you've played sport at a competitive level and at a professional level, that that still sits deep in you. Um, so with all those with all those opportunities afoot, I, and I wanted to support it. Um, you know, I had hoped to be involved in it in some capacity. Anyway, I will be going as a fan. Um, so when I when I found out that it doesn't look like I'm going to be involved in the broadcast side of it, yeah, no brainer for me. Just what you said there about those competitive juices and whatever, the response from some of the players that haven't been picked has surprised me a little bit. There's there's, there's some some bitterness out there. Um, do you think the, the the fact that certain people have said that I'm not going to go to the qualifier, I, sh I should be in there automatically, is a little bit disrespectful to the ones they've picked because. When it's only a small field to start with, it's almost impossible to keep everyone happy. Yeah, exactly. It's not like they said, right, you know, there's a if the if the field had been thirty two and I wasn't considered, then I probably thought, mm, that's a little you know, because you know, I think I may may maybe have had a shout, but you know, it is a small field, they've got to think of it commercially as well as anything else. You know, commercially it has to be a success for it to go forward. Um, you know, it's not a mates club. That's for sure, um, and we know we deal with Jason all the time. He's a he's fairly ruth ruthless in that department, but so yeah, and and the fact that some people who haven't been picked have said, oh, they're not interested at all. I, I don't understand it because there is nothing out there for us. There's no, you know, there's no, you know, we can't go back on the challenge tour because again, that when that gets back to normal, that's a, that's the rigors of that, and again, the level's still very very good. You see hundred averages in that, um, so. Yeah, a little disappointed, not surprised by, by some of the reactions. Um, I'm pretty, I suppose, just, well, I've exchanged some conversations with Shane Burgess. I think he'll eventually go to the qualifiers. I mean, he can still play the game. We, we've we seen him in the in the live league, all but briefly. Um, but yeah, the, the qualifiers are going to be interesting. I can't wait to see the, the lineup because it is limited to 128 and it's only one each day. Um, but the, the, there's, a, there's a tournament, on the, a flyer tournament on the Friday night. That's going to be interesting. Um, that will probably give us a good idea about who's, who can still play at a decent level. Going to play in the flyer or just keep an eye over it and see who's No, I should what? be playing in everything. I, I'll be needing as much competitive practice as possible. Uh, so as soon as things get back to even more normality, I should be entering as, as many little local competitions as I can. Um, two local lads to me, Mark and Paul. Uh, I should be pounding the uh, pounding the board with them probably two or three nights a week. So the the gym's going to take a little bit of a step back. Um, I should still go and do a load of cardio, uh, which I started doing originally, and and I'll just tick over with that just for my mental health and my fitness. Um, but yeah, I won't be throwing any big weights around. That's for sure. <laughs> back to some super league and that as well. Yeah, well, definitely. Sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've got plans to maybe play a bit of county as well, where where it fits in. Obviously, my schedule with this is quite tough but the beauty of this is I will have a key so once the players have, have gone in the day I should be in here ticking over having two or three hours on my own or you know some, on the odd occasion you know when I can find a player who says yeah listen I'll come and have a couple of hours with you then you know I do everything's going to be a, a bit of a bonus but I will be I'll be I'll be well up to speed by the time it comes around in November. When you are back home whether that's north or south yeah one when you're south Fancy gate crashing that Ryan Sell Gary Anderson practice part? <laughs> yeah, I mean I have done a bit of practice with Ryan before and, and before lockdown and really really enjoyed it. Um, not not now um, because I think I'd end up just spending my two or three hours on the chalks. I'd be I'd be uh, I'd become the uh, beer runner and chalker. But 
yeah, listen, I get on really well with both of them, and yeah. I'm sure they wouldn't mind me, you know, maybe once or twice a week uh, having a session. They're both, I mean, literally, Ryan Searle's pretty much a neighbour, uh, and Gary lives probably 25 minutes up the road. So, and I've got to go up there anyway. I've got to go up there with my drone and do I'll some. Just have you. You're going up to yeah, anyway. I've got so. To, so maybe I'll have a little deal with Gary over that. <laughs> so, no, you can, that that's free, but I want some practice. But uh, yeah, that that will be brutal, but that will obviously speed the process up of getting me back to some kind of sort of decent level. I want to be within a within a month, maybe six weeks. I want to be sort of averaging regularly over 90, and then and then then we see where we go. It's a real twinkle in your eye, isn't that? Yeah, yeah. I listen. I loved the idea of it years ago. I mean, me and Jason spoke about it many times. I spoke to Barry about it. I spoke to Matt Porter about it on occasions. I spoke to the people at ITV about it, and there was never really, there was never really that. I don't know. There were, because because there were still so many players playing on the tour at that time, and of course we didn't. Barney would have been involved, but of course he went and won a won a tour card, and then went and won a pro tour, didn't he? So. Um, Good for the rest of us, because he's still very, very dangerous, <laughs> and he, he would have been he'd have been up there with one of the favourites. Um, but whoever whoever comes through that qualifiers and whoever's in that final field, they are going to have to play very well because we've seen with, you know, just you know, even listen, Keith Deller will, will not leave a stone unturned. Uh, I already know he is practicing three or four hours a day, and of course he does lots of exhibition. So when that comes back. Um, he's another one that would be dangerous. John Park, another one. That there'd be something for him that would give him, like myself, a reason to sort of knuckle down and put in some proper practice. Because, you know, not only, it, you know, it won't sort of change um, probably their position in in the game as in a pro. But of course, it opens a, you you win that opens a lot of doors in terms of exhibition work, promotional stuff, sponsorship opportunities, um, and bragging rights, of course. One final one. You had a lot of battles with your old mate, Mr. Taylor, over the years. How nice would it be, yeah, I can't, one last time, to get to get one over on him in this? Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, that would, that would make it twice. Um, <laughs> no, I've I, I been a couple of times, a, a few more times than the record suggests, but um, I, can, I can remember qualifying for one, one of my first PDC tournaments, and it was, um, it was the top 15 in the world, and there was one qualifying place. Uh, and I won that. I think I beat Dennis Smith in the final. I remember beating Eric on route. Beat some, beat some great players on route. And lo and behold, the, it, that was on the quadro board. Lo and behold, the draw come out. Chris Mason, Phil Taylor. I mean, I know since then I, I stupidly um, did draws and said, "Well, I want to draw Phil." No, not this time. I'd, I, I wouldn't mind play, uh, if I qualified, which would be, which would be a miracle. I wouldn't mind playing him in the final. Um, but even then, that, that would probably hurt even more. But yeah, he's he, listen. He's rightly favourite, but he won't have it his, all his own way. That's for sure. I, I think Burnett, Adams, like I say, Terry Jenkins, even Deller, Park, uh, even John Lowe. Listen, that throw is just silk, isn't it? And I mean, it, it it had longevity over the years, and I doubt it's changed very much. And John's a very proud man, so he's another one that will come into this giving it absolutely everything. But Listen, it's just going to be a great event. It'd be great to go to the qualifiers. And like I said, I'm going to be there as a fan regardless. Nice pleasure as always, mate. We can't wait Cheers, to see man. you in it.